Over the past few years, newspaper posters like this have become a familiar sight. Since it first came to light, AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, has spread dramatically. And along with that spread, there's been increasing concern about just how contagious the new disease really is. Whether it's sold newspapers or not, AIDS mozzie link fear is probably not the media's finest hour during its coverage of the AIDS story. In fact, it seems that sometimes there's been virtually more misinformation about the disease than information. Just how desperately people fear AIDS can be seen with the rather sad controversy that's developed at Gosford in New South Wales in recent weeks. Why is that, mate? There's not enough known about this disease, mate. Dad, you're, I'm you're... not putting my child at risk. Parents of other children are demanding that a three-year-old girl who's been infected with the AIDS virus be withdrawn from the local childcare centre before they'll let their children go back again. We know that these are very small risks. We understand that. But we are still talking about our children, my child. Not yours, not, not the Department of Health, my child. And as a responsible parent, I have to consider that. At the heart of the issue is the basic question. Just how infectious is the AIDS virus? Well, the surprising answer is not very. That's not to say that AIDS isn't a serious disease. It is. Once actually in the bloodstream, it can be devastating. The virus attacks something called T4 helper cells. While T4s may not sound much, they play a crucial role in coordinating the body's vital immune system. With the number of T4s reduced, the immune system's ability to fight off other infections which invade the body is severely compromised, leaving the way open to serious illness or even death. The point to remember, though, is that trouble only starts once the virus is actually in the bloodstream. And a substantial body of evidence now exists that the AIDS virus is so fragile that it takes quite specific circumstances to get it into the bloodstream in potent form. Professor John Dwyer is Professor of Medicine at the University of New South Wales and an AIDS expert. AIDS is, is transmitted and readily transmitted when um, infected blood containing infected T cells actually goes from the infected person into the moving bloodstream of another person. Virtually only could happen through blood transfusion or the infusion of blood products or if you were an intravenous drug addict and you were sharing needles. Certainly that's an efficient way of spreading the virus. The other efficient way is through uh, contact with uh, sexual secretions, the exchange of bodily fluids in that fashion. Seminal fluid is rich in the virus and when it is deposited in the uh, intestinal tract, either in the rectum or the mouth or if it's deposited in the vagina even, uh, an infectious dose can be received. On the subject of blood transfusions, it's important to point out that while AIDS has been spread through contaminated blood transfusions in the past, precautions are now taken to screen out the potential danger. People donating blood are questioned to see if they might be carriers, and there are now tests to determine if the blood contains the AIDS antibody. While there have been tragic cases in the past where transfusions have passed on the AIDS antibodies, the tests and careful monitoring make the future possibilities of contracting the AIDS virus so remote that the statistics are breathtaking. There is a less than 1 in 25 million chance now of getting AIDS from a blood transfusion. The main concern, though, seems to be that it's somehow possible to catch AIDS through an extremely casual contact. Say, for instance, from just breathing the same air as AIDS victims, or coming into contact with some form of body substance like saliva. Well, AIDS just doesn't work that way. And according to Professor DeWire, it's important to remember that while it can be devastating once caught, the AIDS virus is actually much less infectious than many other common diseases. Well, it's clearly infectious and it's spread the way, say, that hepatitis B infection is spread. That is mainly through contact with infected blood or, con or uh, infected sexual secretions. But <clears throat> it's nothing like as infectious as hepatitis B which is nothing like as infectious as influenza or the common cold virus. You've got to work at getting AIDS. Uh, you don't have to work at getting the flu. So on that sort of scale, it's not a particularly infectious disease. The facts are that AIDS just doesn't spread through the air like influenza, which you can get from anybody just sneezing. It may come as a surprise that the virus, once it's out in the open, is in fact killed quite easily, 
Normal household bleaches, which contain at least 1% hypochlorite, will kill the virus. It's also easily destroyed by heat. It doesn't even take boiling water. Just 56 degrees centigrade for a few minutes will kill the virus. Because the virus is so fragile, it means you won't get the AIDS virus from anything touched casually by an infected person. Things like telephones, toilets, or even more commonplace things like banknotes or letters. Now, while the AIDS virus has been found in body fluids, like urine, tears and saliva, there are no cases of it being transmitted this way. Let's take saliva as an example. Is it possible to get AIDS from infected saliva? Well, what you'd have to have is a, a lot of virus in very good condition that is ready to really jump into you and infect you uh, in the saliva and then the uh, saliva going into a part of the body where there was a way that the virus could penetrate and get into the cells and cause the disease. Now, the fact of the matter is that in saliva there's a very little amount of virus uh, not enough concentrated virus to really produce a good infecting dose and as a result you would have to consume enormous quantities to be infected. Now even if that were the case um, the virus is not left to its own devices in saliva. Saliva is full of enzymes and other things that we use to start to digest our food and the evidence is very suggestive that the virus is not in good condition and not well enough to infect us anyway. Let's compare AIDS with another disease, Hepatitis B. Although it's not the usual way of transmission, it would take about 50 mils of hepatitis B infected saliva to pass on the infection. You can get some idea of just how remote the chances are of getting AIDS from saliva when you remember that the AIDS virus is 50 to 100 times less infectious than hepatitis B. It sounds revolting, but on these figures, it would take about 5 litres of AIDS infected saliva in one hit to pass on the virus. As the hepatitis B situation is extraordinarily rare, uh, and in fact, in uh, recent times in Australia, in schools and uh, in mental institutes and hospitals, never been recorded, uh, the risk of picking up AIDS from contact with uh, saliva or tears or that sort of secretion is infinitesimal. Everybody has a responsibility to learn uh, about this disease so that they can react appropriately, and the opposite being inappropriately, which is the way much of the media has responded. Uh, once you've learned about the disease, I think you um, want to try and generate ultimate sympathy for the victims of this disease. It's a horrible thing. And then um, do everything one can to contribute to uh, minimizing the suffering of these people, certainly by making sure that they're not uh, removed from society as if they were lepers, uh, they don't, don't lose their jobs, the children aren't discriminated against, etc. So I think Educating oneself and then acting appropriately summarizes the response.